No. So the little salary you receive, if you're working in a very expensive city, you're supposed to use that money to cater for rent, cater yeah. for your kids. There's no mm. particular uh, insurance done specifically for nurses to help mm. them. So on top of your family pressure, dealing with finances, you're at work, you're thinking of how to make money to pay your bills, pay your mortgage, and it's crazy. Yeah, there's no priority for you even if you're sick. If you're yeah. sick, mm-hmm. you work in a hospital, but yeah. when you're sick, you have to go and start from your GP. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. get, even getting an appointment is difficult. Yeah. You get some, it. some hospitals in Ghana, you have to you pay for you your medication. Pay. You pay for everything. Yeah, do, do you, you pay, pay for it? everything as a nurse. You're admitted to the... Ho- the only thing you enjoy is a bed. Yeah, exactly. Every other thing you have to pay. Yes, even even in my country, the, the salaries... Guys, we are back again. Like we never left. Back in a building. Yes, so... Nurses week was last week. Yeah. Yeah. We, we didn't get a chance to shoot a video. So we are celebrating all nurses. Big shout outs to everyone that yeah. is still in the nursing profession. Those who escaped, those who ran away from the nursing profession, God <laughs> is watching you. No, when you say escape, it's like it's a prison. Or some, it's a, for it's... some people, yeah. Okay, so those who left us yeah. to pursue <laughs> other careers. <laughs> Or to become businessmen, God is watching you. <laughs> yeah, but we we love every nurse. We are nurses as well. Mm-hmm. So I've got a food for thoughts or a quote on on nursing, and then we dive into our topic for discussion for today. Yep. So it says here, nurses, one of the best things, one of the few blessings of being ill. Nurses, then quotation marks come. Uh, yeah, one of the few blessings of being ill. So when you become ill, the blessing among your illness is the nurse that receives you and treats you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's very true. Yeah. Good, 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 good. So I've got a few questions I'll ask you before we, we go into our discussion. Today, all right, do you think money buys happiness? No. No. Yes. Yes. Why no? Why yes? Because uh, happiness is the kind of thing you cannot pay with money. Mm. No. You ca- you you cannot say I will go to the supermarket and I buy happiness. No. Yeah. Okay. Fifi, yeah, why and yes? you, same way you can go to the supermarket and pick up an item and say I'm paying with happiness. So why can't <laughs> money buy? Why can how can money buy happiness? Money can buy you things that you need yeah Uh money can buy people Mm. even for you Mm. money can help you travel wherever you Mm. want to go money can help you do things that would make you happy money can yeah Yeah. okay but i i am i am disagree with that yeah because okay you say now i will go and buy these shoes these roses and this blow but when you get in your hand and you say you're still not satisfied yeah, yeah ha- you don't pay the happiness <laughs> no yeah, yeah. So, if you don't have happiness if you put the the responsibility in about regarding your happiness in material things mm-hmm. money or even people that not is happiness okay no so i was <laughs> no. i was someone said money won't necessarily buy happiness but it can create the environment for happiness money is necessary in life but don't buy happiness it doesn't buy happiness but once it buys the things that makes you happy indirectly yeah, it's what it happiness, the happiness for you. <laughs> okay 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 <laughs> one another question what do you think came first the hen or the egg no the so the so the hen or the egg which one came first did the egg come into being because it's the egg that is being hatched to become a hen or a cock or a whatever? A hen. I'll say the hen because when God created, I mean, depending on the being you believe in and how the Christian story yeah. is for you. Now, for Christians, when God created, for example, human beings, yeah, the Bible says He created Adam and Eve, mm-hmm. you know, breath, breathed into Him, blah, blah, blah. 
it didn't say he created the fetus and allowed it to um, you know grow over nine months mm. and stuff like that so i would say adam was born and then adam then get the chance to you know reproduce so same that was the hen started laying eggs and then no, you don't know by by the which way God created the animals. You don't know. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I think. <laughs> yeah. So you think the egg came before the? <laughs> no, I don't know. I cannot say no, because I don't know. <laughs> okay, then my. I, la- I don't have the answer. Sorry. No, no. So and my last question. Yeah. Would you agree that homework, exam, and assignments should be banned? What would you feel? Would you be happy if homework, assignments, exams? So let's say there's no exam, there's no homework. You go to school, but there's no exam. No, there's no, no. 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 <laughs> I, 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 I definitely disagree with that. Yeah. I mean, you should be able to produce some form of work to show yeah. that your understanding is consolidated. Yeah. And someone who taught you should then say that, okay, I've done a good work. Mm. You've, you've also been able to absorb what okay. i've told you so yeah. you yeah. need to find a way how to to prove you are you are learning yeah mm. and also if you will apply for a job the the employer need to find any way you are competent for this work mm. yeah no. exactly. <laughs> and, and i i i mean i'm i'm happy with the fact that you probably be you have one assessment or something to mm. cover the whole thing I don't like the idea of having to do quizzes mm. like Basu. You do a quiz, you have a classwork. There's an exercise. Yeah. There's an exam. <laughs> no. Okay. I, I, so that's why I kind of like the education system here. Like, mm. we've taught you everything. Now we're giving you a chance. Produce what, in your own understanding what, what you think mm, you've yeah. learned. Yeah. Okay. So now to our topic for discussion for yeah. today. What makes you fulfilled as a nurse? What made me as a feel as a nurse? I, when I start working in the healthcare, mm-hmm. and as I say, previous videos, I I born in the healthcare working family. Mm-hmm. I was thinking before then to be a doctor. Yeah, you mentioned. But that. when I start to to be in 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 this work with my mom. I decide to be as a nurse mm. because I see the best person, the more important person in the in the patient life is a nurse. Mm. Even when the people say is the doctor, no, no, mm. the nurse is there. Yeah, yeah. So you feel fulfilled as a nurse, like by caring for people. Yeah, is it okay, Fifi? What makes you fulfilled or happy to be a nurse? Yeah, obviously, knowing that um, someone comes in literally with their life in your hands literally mm. their life in your hands and then they're going away feeling that now they have their life back in mm. their hands mm. that that is that, that is a great feeling knowing okay. that you've been able to touch a life yeah. you know like you feel like an angel you know, okay. yeah yeah it's so yeah. comfortable <laughs> when you reach in the world and you see you realize that patient maybe will die tomorrow and you go and for a few minutes you make that patient life mm. happy you yeah. know and it's really comfortable. Mm-hmm. And you say, I am I am important for that patient. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I did yeah. this. So uh, what makes me fulfilled as a nurse is when I see my patients smiling. Mm. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. You you approach them and they are so happy to see yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. It That's... makes you know that you are doing a very good job. Right. Okay, so um, would each one of us um, say what was the most exciting moment like what was that moment in your life with a patient that you you felt like if you if you died today like you've you've achieved a very great thing what was that remarkable um memorable moment you had with a patient any patient what have you had any memorable moment with any patient that transformed you made you so happy any experience in mind uh, in my case, when I was in my country, in the mathology inpatient, mm. I get a John pe- patient. Mm. A what? I get a John patient. A yeah. young patient. Yes, yeah. uh, she is a, a girl. Mm. Was because she passed away. Oh, bless her. She have a uh, 22 years old, mm-hmm. and she was with me in the war for around one year. Mm. She have a 
bad condition, mm-hmm. lymphoma, oh. no Hawkins in the end of the stage. And one of my shifts, she was in the world in the critical condition and she knows she will die. And she hold my hand and say, please don't leave me alone. Stay oh, with me. Oh, no. I just have to swallow my cheese and I say, I will stay with you. Don't be afraid. So, but don't leave me. She hold my hand so hard and said, don't leave me, please. Stay here. But I say, your mom is here, your family is here. Don't, don't mess up my family. Stay with, with me, don't go. Wow, that's very touching. And it's, yeah. it's a younger person. And you say, wow, she want me to stay in the last yeah. time of her life. So it's, I make you feel realized as yourself. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that is very touching. And I, I've had loads of, of great encounters with patients yeah. and um i also lost a patient like that and with that patient there's a song that i love one of my favorite songs it's kiss um kiss by her. um it goes like da, 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 baby i can get that song kiss by Rose. if you know it you know it so usually when i'm working I mean, back then when I was on the ward, if I enter a patient's room and I'm doing something, I usually hum songs. You know, I like would be humming the song. And that day, that patient was like, that is her favorite song. Whenever she's driving, like she... So we sang the song from start to finish oh. when I was doing whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And later on, I got to hear that that patient had passed. Oh. And anytime I hear that song, that patient comes to mind. Mm-hmm. And that memory we shared, it, it, like it's... One of the best things that has ever happened to me. Yeah. 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 Knowing a patient is that ill and you being able to celebrate such a moment with them. It's it's phenomenal. Also, one of the wishes before she died, she she know I like makeup and she told me, the same day I pass away, I want you to make more. Make of me. And Uh I want to look like a princess. And I told her, you are the princess already. So for me, it was really hard. Because I have to, she get on, we get in, in the friend relationship because it was a full year with me. Mm. And when I saw that, I have to make up with the last time mm. for me was really hard. Mm. And every time when I make up by myself, I remember her. And also I have picture with her and okay. it's really hard. Yeah. yeah. So for me, it was um, this, she was, when I say middle age, she was around her 60s. So like quite young, old they're about very ill and then uh, back it so she was in the last hospital I work in Ghana before coming to the UK and all of a sudden we we had an emergency buzz that we had to rush to this patient and she was she was going off she didn't have a line she's so friendly like she likes everyone she didn't have a cannula so the doctors were trying everybody was just trying to fix a line so many pricks here and there and I don't know, for some miraculous reason, I managed to get uh, yeah. a cannula in her right ACF and we gave her that medication. I think she she was overloaded with fluid. Her heart was just squeezing yeah. against each other. So we managed to give her that rosemide and a few emergency medications and managed to resuscitate her. So when she woke up, they, they told her like everything that happened and they told her, I managed to get the line for her and all that. <laughs> this woman, she became very close to me. She, every family member, she introduced me to the, uh, <laughs> the entire family. Yeah, like, yeah. always wants to give me money. Like, yeah. she, she never wants, like, anytime I'm around, when I come to work, she's like, oh, my son is in. And, uh, <laughs> and any, any new patient that comes, because she was on the ward for so long, any new patient that comes to the ward, she said, have you met um, that young man yet? He's very yeah, brilliant. He's, very he's so amazing. And, <laughs> and so when you walk into the world, you're like, oh, are you the so so person? Yeah. Oh, we've had your name. We learned. Oh, yeah. come, can you come and take care of me today? And good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that, that, <laughs> yeah. That, that feeling is great. Yeah. Um, I mean, talking of all these things, do you think we are appreciated enough as nurses? I think um, it depends. It depends. So, society knows that nurses are an invaluable human resource, right? But because of a few things that some nurses do, it just brands 
most of the nurses as bad or very harsh or like unwelcoming but especially in the uk i see that sometimes you have a few aggressive patients a few patients who are mad at a certain treatment they didn't receive or they received late and all that but for most people you provide them with care and they are appreciative oh thank you so much the family is so nice to you like everybody lets you know that they think you are doing a very good job unless of course they realize that what you are doing you don't know what you're about yeah then they'll have a problem some people are naturally not nice so you, you can't fault them and you won't base your job satisfaction based on those people but for most people here they are appreciative back in ghana the insults for nurses is about 50 percent to the appreciation they give to nurses so many people because i don't know for you know a few people do some things and then they brand the whole profession as uh, nurses are rude nurses talk to patients anyhow but for most people they, they recognize their invaluable um, effort we put into our work yeah so yes uh some some country they are still devaluating the nursing career mm. also i have experience in the previous country i was working and then they think that the the most important person is the doctor mm. you have to do mm. what the doctor say even if it's wrong mm. so i have a bad experience with a doctor and they say, tell me you have to calculate the patient during the covid emergency the patient was really asymptomatic mm. the patient was like us okay yeah. so I make a simple question to the doctor. What is the why you want to put IV access for the patient? Mm. Because you know the risk. It's invasive procedure. Mm. So and the doctor gets so mad. I start to make noise in front of the patient and I say and also my line manager analyzes what but because you have to respect you are new here, you don't know why. Why, why you, you shouldn't ask questions. Yeah. See, because in some some places people don't think good good doctor good thing work is mm. work each together yeah a good doctor no is a good doctor if you don't have a good nurse yeah. behind you mm. because the nurse pass most of the time with the patient and the nurse can cover you yeah when you make a mistake and mm. tell you that is wrong please rectify mm. most of the people no don't understand that also countries they don't value the nursing work and they didn't pay they don't pay they don't you pay enough you come to pay yeah. You walk you walk as a beast. It's my case. Yeah. In my country, you walk as a beast and you don't receive the proper payment. Mm. But I get a, a boss, my line manager, if she sell me, send you kiss for you. Mm-hmm. She's my mentor, my best teacher. Would you want to mention her name? Andrea. Oh. Andrea Arias is she's a line manager in hematology ward in, in Hospital in Manos Amheiras in Cuba. Mm. She's the best hematology mm. nurse I, I know in my life. Mm. And she always uh, advises you and always force you and always push you to learn more mm. because she say, as a nurse, you cannot leave nobody put the shoes over you. Mm. Yeah. You have to respect yourself as a nurse because mm. you need to learn. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this... N- n- any doctor can come and tell you what you have to do and you are wrong. No, 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 no. Exactly. And, and I, I give think, all my... Yeah, and it's not just within the world. It is transcended to the point where even among the public, before mm-hmm. they come in, they, they think the doctors are the bosses. bosses so yeah. if you're the nurse, you don't know anything. If mm-hmm. something is happening to them, they want you to call the doctor and all of yeah. these. But they don't know that we, we learn about these drugs that we're giving them. They don't know that we know about the things we're carrying out for them. Yeah. Doctors, nurses... These are two completely different professions. We are not their subordinates. Mm. We work as a team. Oh, you yeah, definitely. You yeah. We study the same. <laughs> but, but, yeah, but we are not studying the same, but I, I am agree with yeah, you. Yeah, 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 they add advanced, on a bit more yeah. in terms of the yeah, anatomy yeah. and yeah, all of those we bits. But basics, we are yeah. two different things. Two, um, I mean, two different professions, two different teams. But we work together effectively to um, for the, uh, what was it called? For... The patient's outcome to be good. Did you mm-hmm. get it? Another reason why I think we are underappreciated is that sometimes 
even within the teams that we are working, other colleagues can make you feel belittled mm. in front of the doctors, even in front of the general public. And that gradually builds. Do you yeah. get it? And then it goes out there. And then, I mean, I, here in the UK, I think they're, the nurses are a bit more respected than back home. Like, oh, yeah. When you're a nurse in Ghana, chances are everyone has zero nearly zero respect for you because when they get into the hospital whoever they encounter first they think that person is a nurse automatically mm. yeah they they get more treated at the records department it's a nurse mm. if they get more treated at the finance department it's a mm. nurse so these kind of notion that people have cannot mm -hmm. contribute to why we be undervalued in so my opinion. I, actually most of the people think nurse is the person who change the pamper yeah clean the poo poo give injection uh, give give her pills yeah and give her the food to the patient mm, no. that's it that's it yeah. and it's completely wrong yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it is wrong. we are more than that oh yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah absolutely so i think um with where you were saying that the doctor was being rude to you with regards to you asking a question i've encountered such situations where a doctor embarrassed me like said a lot of crap in front of a patient about my work just um ridiculed my competency so the doctor said in a very busy ward a surgical ward where you are taking care of 10 patients all 10 patients are on iv fluids about five of them have got catheters five of them are bedridden how do you expect one person to do everything and i've been to this patient served I've, I've, I've seen all the patients in the morning, served analgesia to all of them, their regular medications. So this doctor went to the patient and said that, um, just normal consultation. I said, oh, how is your pain now? And the patient said, oh, my pain is a bit better, but I still have a bit of pain, yes, and yeah, the incision side. The doctor said, where's the nurse looking after you? So I just, I was uh, behind the curtain they had drawn, so I just entered it. So this patient is in pain. I've prescribed so and so medication. Why haven't you given to the patient? I hate it when patients don't receive analgesia. Didn't give me a chance to explain. And I said, Ness, you nurses, you don't know anything. Just, I was just looking at him. And I said, I've served every medication the patient is due. Not knowing, he had given the instruction to a junior doctor to prescribe and the doctor didn't prescribe the medication. Thinking that it has been prescribed and I didn't give it. But it doesn't give you that audacity. At least you should have some sense. Yeah to cross check and even that you should see me as a colleague exactly speak to me behind the curtain yes that, oh, why didn't you you know patients in this situation they need analgesia check it out i don't know but you don't ridicule the next time i'm going to that patient the patient will think that you're i don't know competent. what i'm about exactly yeah. they'll think you're not competent and that story then begins to sell do you get it the, their visitors will come around oh these nurses here are horrible. Yeah. Then they'll take it out. Yeah. Nurses are horrible. And then that thing, that falls will begin to pedal. And, and, and sometimes when a patient to comes it. to complain about a nurse to a doctor or a fellow colleague, another nurse, the sort of answer you give to that patient or that member, uh, that relative, yeah. will let them either increase their respect for a nurse or decrease their respect. Exactly. So yeah. it comes to complain. So I think that this nurse didn't do, oh, probably might have escaped you know it's very busy and all that so yeah, yeah the next time remind the nurse too but if you say yeah that is how they are or that is how um some of that that my colleague she's no good some of these nurses they are no good she feels that she wants the patient to think to, she's yeah. a very good nurse yeah or she, that doctor wants to make himself look more educated or yeah. more knowledgeable than yourself but they don't know that gradually derailing the interest or the the public's respect for nurses it makes your work difficult yeah yeah because if every patient decides not to go for 50 percent of the nurses to look mm. after them because they've been told that these nurses yeah, are, are not good, good because of tiny mistakes then you have that responsibility to look after all that those yeah. patients so imagine would you, you think you'll be able to do that yeah and and with something dia said earlier people think that Nursing is all about giving injections, giving tablets, yeah. and change pamper. That, that's do, it. You get it, but there are nurses who are doing research, nurses who are in IT, nurses who are who are doing specialties and yes. a whole host of other things. 
it doesn't end at the bedside. And this is something that should go out there to the yeah. public. Not all nurses are strictly at the bedside. Even if you're at, at the, the bedside, bedside, it doesn't mean that exactly. you are confined to, no. to um, exactly. changing. There, there are people who are bedside nurses, but outside of it are running businesses. But there you are know people how... who just love the passion so much that is, um, who have the passion for the profession so much that it's not even about the money. It's, they just like the fact that they are out yeah. there helping people. Do you get but it? But most of the people don't think how important is bedside nurse. Yeah. Because yeah. even to change the pamper, you have to study and you have to do the correct yeah. exactly. to change the positioning, pressure, checking for pressure, pressure ulcers, ulcer you know, assessment and all that. The Why right can you use to clean the all of these things? Yeah. Do you people get don't it? think about that. Yeah. Nurses are not dumb. Like I'm so worked up right now. Yeah. And I think with uh, some some of these things stem from institutions as well, how institutions are run and then government policies for nurses. Do you know, day by day, there are so many stringent laws against nurses. It makes let's say, uh, nurses yeah. look as if they are there to kill patients. You know, always uh, media publication. So um, if a nurse does so, so sue the nurse. L there are lots yeah. of uh, advocacy to sue nurses, to sue that. And it doesn't really help. It makes you are a nurse and you are working and you are always watching your back. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't do the right thing. But you shouldn't feel unsafe. You shouldn't feel as if the little error that happened to us human. Yeah. So you are working and you, you feel unsafe or you feel that there's someone watching like on your neck, waiting for the slightest error. So they sue you, take you to court or imprison you. It's, it's not a safe environment. And then when nurses are underpaid, nurses are not giving good remuneration, <laughs> you know, and when you have a big NS assignment good, of patient and you're still <laughs> satisfied financially that that happiness coming to work because the work is difficult it's not easy yeah, it's not just working on the wards, a &E, you, yeah. so if you are given like accommodation support how many countries have um support like um accommodation support for nurses no so the little salary you receive if you are working in a very expensive city you're supposed to use that money to cater for rent, cater yeah. for your kids. There's no mm -hmm. particular uh, insurance done specifically for nurses to help mm -hmm. them. So on top of your family pressure, dealing with finances, you're at work, you're thinking of how to make money to pay your bills, pay your mortgage, and it's crazy. Yeah, there's no priority for you even if you're sick. If you're yeah. sick, mm -hmm. you work in a hospital, but yeah. when you're sick, you have to go and start from your GP. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. get, even getting an appointment is difficult. Yeah. You get some, some hospitals in Ghana, you have to, you pay for you your medication. You pay for everything. Yeah, do, do you, you pay for it? everything as a nurse. You're admitted to the... The only thing you enjoy is a bed. Yeah, exactly. Every other thing you have to pay. Yes, even even in my country, the the salary is ridiculous. Next to Peanuts. I don't, I don't want to say, <laughs> but it's ridiculous. And sometimes you, you're feeling so grateful because you are a nurse, but sometimes you're feeling you give up yeah. because you say, for what I work in, yeah, because for, for you're not you're, you're doing... not going to work for money, but you need money. Exactly. You need money. Yeah. work for free. Yeah, it's work. Work should earn. In my something. in my country, exactly. we don't have insurance as a nurse, and also as a as a person, we don't have insurance. So you say for what I work in. So sometimes you're feeling like I want to give up, and also you receive me straight from your line manager. Mm -hmm. Also, you don't have a lot of stuff to work. And they always put the pressure on your neck. You have to do the correct thing. Mm. You have to work yeah. Yeah. perfect. You have to do everything perfect. But what do you give me? No logistics. Yeah. yeah. When what do you give me to make a proper work? It's it's crazy. Sometimes you have to make a magic. Yeah. Imagine we don't got enough chips, chips to make the bed. The sheets, yeah. The sheet. Exactly. And then you say, the patient passport on the bed. How I will do if you don't leave me for... for, for she, yeah, yeah. When, when you were a nurse, of, uh, it's just to give you an yeah. example. Yeah. yeah, when when you're a nurse, you're expected to do lots of things that are not even a part of your duty. You have to make a to, magic. When someone needs food, they're coming to you. If someone needs, you, you're a nurse, but you're doing multiple jobs. You're doing a whole lot of other things. Talking of logistics, there was I remember a very good example, and I will never forget where I was working. There was a, a faulty ECG machine. I think. There were two ECG machines. They both look alike. And usually you would have one person using the other one and you'd be left with it. You don't know which one works well, which one doesn't. So that day, whether fortunately or fortunately for me, 
I ended up picking the, the, the terrible one. And I didn't know this until I attached everything to the patients, tried to, you know, get the leads on everything. And then I realized that was the broken one. I had to take everything off, go bring a new machine. And as I was fixing the new one, I noticed that that one also had now developed a fault. And the patient, I remember very well, the patient said, you don't look like you know what you're doing. Uh -oh. Yeah. And I nearly died. You <laughs> like, like I, I, I felt life leave me. I was like, I didn't say anything in front of the patient. I only explained that, oh, this machine is blah, 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 blah. But when I left the patient's room, I, I felt, I, I, I felt life leave me. And I had to go back into the same patient's room to do something for this patient. And when I entered, I realized that the countenance wasn't like before. Because obviously, this patient now has doubts that yeah. this person is probably not that good. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And this was no fault of mine. Mm. There were faulty machines. But here I am looking incompetent in the eyes of, yeah, of, of another person. Because I, and, and above all this, you don't pay me enough. No. No, about the logistic also... In my country, it's sad to say that they give you. We are working twenty-four hour shift. They, I will give you one of the big, the many examples we have. Imagine you have twenty patients, one nurse, and they all all just give you thirteen syringe for twenty-four hour shift, and they told you <laughs> you have to do it. 13. 30 syringe for 24 13. hour shift. Terrible working Three conditions. Three, zero. Ter what terrible. you will do it? As soon as what, you, what you're doing, if your line manager told you, you just have 30 syringe for 24 hour shift. If there are no IV medications to give, that's fine. Ah. It's an inpatient ward, a mythology you, ward. You, they, you, they, you <laughs> have See, to Sometimes you, you need syringe not even for medications, for something else. You it's know what, what we do it? We get a piece of plaster, mark the syringe. This is the bad one. Keep the syringe in this side. <laughs> in the tray, yes. You have, a, you don't have. Yeah, you have to improvise. If it's something happens, ah, that is the, 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 it's ironic. If the patient gets some infection, ah, they come and blame you. Yeah. How come you will blame me? That's, that's one of the difficulties, like having. It's just one example. Less uh, things to work with. And at the end of the day, you are responsible for the end results of someone's incompetence or someone's inability to think to yeah. provide the sort the, of the things right you stuff need. That yeah. you need. You, you have you have to you have to carry up with everything. Food for the patient. Logist your logistic. You have to everything. You have to check for everything. And people think nurses is just clean up poo one change. Mm. Yeah. No. Do you think this is why lots of people are now leaving the profession? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, some people, for some people, they think there are so many risks involved in nursing. Absolutely. You can, you can contract an infection. You can, apart from the emotional trauma that comes with it, the stress. The body. You know, <laughs> there's so many things and you are not uh, remunerated enough if you don't do overtime shifts. Yeah. Which is a sacrifice. Yeah, exactly. At the, at the, at the expense of your health. Yeah, and you're also losing work-life You don't balance. get, yes, you don't get enough money to cater for your basic needs why wouldn't i go and sit at a shop somewhere where i'll end even if not more equal to what i'll be ending on the world with less save, stress save myself from all this drama and at the end of the day when you know when you lose your pain like you're worthless yeah mm -hmm. what, what makes you a nurse so why why would i risk my pain and once you lose your pain sometimes you end up being branded in a certain way depending on what caused yeah. you to lose your pain you find it difficult to even get jobs outside so it's better i leave early not to lose the pain and then i find a job that will give me some sanity in yeah. thoughts yeah yeah absolutely and and i mean um talking about the fact that you're overworked and all things no one wants to go through that stress you know constantly having to overwork yourself there, there are people who work so much to try to generate a certain set of income that they lose work-life mm -hmm. balance. Yeah. You're yeah. not able to do anything for yourself. You're constantly 
thinking about work and how to pack shifts mm. and how to mm. go up and down and you live as a slave yeah exactly you don't get to enjoy your life no. you don't get to live y- your life to the fullest do you get it because you have decided to become an angel yeah literally i think the least we can do right as among colleagues and then managers is to create an enabling environment so that among all the, the stress and then everything that nurses are going through at least they feel confident they feel happy to be at work because mm-hmm. if aside your work stress aside your personal problems you find yourself in a toxic environment you have colleagues from Ooh. hell managers from hell then like it's triple problems yeah triple Ooh. you know <laughs> but if your manager is nice your colleagues are nice there's no drama on the wards among friends there's no sort of discrimination you know there's there's lots of discrimination especially if you are not within the country of your origin sometimes people yeah. face all that mm-hmm. yeah putting that aside sometimes competition where this person thinks i'm better for this posi- mm-hmm. position yeah. Yeah. and then they are backbiting your colleague nurse is watching you to make a mistake yeah so some, that they some, capitalize some even on that set traps for you to yeah. fall into you know it makes it very difficult once if we don't help ourselves as nurses there's there's no one to do that for us yeah right yeah so the the least we can do is create a nibbling environment for ourselves as nurses and then it makes everyone happy even if there's stress like you are overstressed and you are happy with your colleagues with your manager fine you you can manage yeah. yeah exactly and i also say that nurses should begin to explore other things explore yeah. let's not limit ourselves to yeah. just nursing do so because like i always say nursing is that part of you which is usually natural like if you're caring you're caring if you're empathetic you're empathetic but aside nursing there are other people who are very good footballers they're mm-hmm. nurses yeah some people who are it gigs they're mm-hmm. nurses other people who are great writers they're mm-hmm. nurses explore that other part of yeah. you begin to if you if you need to publish a story publish it if you need to get active in something do it yeah. um where i work at the moment there is um an icu nurse who is part of the i think weightlifting competition represents britain going to um the olympics and mm. this story begin to sell out there and people yeah. be like oh yeah these guys are not just giving tablets these guys are not, they're, they're doing at, these at, things at they things, are into yeah. content creation they yeah. are running yeah. other business you know so put yourself out there guys if you're a nurse go beyond it explore yeah. just beyond you know pills and injections yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah and cool. yeah uh, one thing i also say is in you know things technology there's so much uh, the the world is moving at a very fast pace right I think most countries should catch up with advancement when it comes to nursing because when this introduction of technology we explore new ways of doing things it makes the uh, work of the nurse much easier yeah and um back in Ghana especially because I'm from Ghana I'll, I'll talk for Ghana I want things to get better for nurses for the healthcare sector we are so rigid we are still confined to the old yeah, uh, norms we right? are so primitive so yeah. even That's in my country word, primitive you see? yeah because yeah. when i reach here and i say wow where i am <laughs> i was surprised the healthcare system is so different yeah from our country and i say i wish to my colleague have this evolution yeah. in the nursing because yeah, exactly. even with the treatment technique I see in this country UK always the nursing is improving improving yeah. changing changing yeah. and that is good. Yeah, I certainly. wish all that things in my country we don't have that. No. Our system is I cannot say it is the bad because we have a, the best healthcare system. We have a lot of preparation but we don't have evolution in the no, yeah there's yeah. no evolution there's no change yeah no change we have yeah in the same Tactic. yes yeah. Yeah, that's nothing it is, yeah my my problem especially is with you know when you're a general nurse you're expected to know everything but you can't keep up with change like yeah sometimes you you've got so much on your plate mm-hmm. it's just work back back to back 
where you are working five days or seven days or, or six days some people go uh, for off days just one day in a week right Crazy. there's little you can do you don't have time for studies in addition so they should create specialty rules back in ghana that's one of our, our big problems we need to create special tools so that some people can take on jobs that the uh, to lessen the burden of the general nurse so yeah. we have tissue viability nurse where you have a patient that comes to the ward with a sort of wound that needs proper management when there's a tissue viability nurse who are specialized in that field he he or she helps the ward yeah. nurse to take of the patients better brings new knowledge yeah right yeah. but where you the general nurse you are supposed to know everything and you you are not given adequate training it's like when you complete school that is it yeah I was there are no workshop opportunities for you you are just yes yeah, so I, I, was, I, I was about to yeah. talk about training so we should we should yeah yeah, yeah what is very good specialties thing. Uh, yeah. i you yeah. were saying something about the create support so i will talk about andrea again thank you she is the kind of line manager always force you to study mm. any course she she know about because you have to go even if you don't want to do it they in the month evaluation they give you bad evaluation because you don't go into study mm. it's always try to improve your knowledge yeah. Yeah. even if you are general nurse or if you are hematology nurse yeah. in my case don't doesn't matter you have to go and do the 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 icu course you yeah. have to go and do dialysis you have mm. to go and do also you, yeah. any course english course or you have to go and do it yeah. if you don't do it they give you bad evaluation yeah. in the month yeah. so that's we have that's to create that yeah. kind of support even if you don't if you, we don't have the condition you have to fill in your place that suppose you have to study you have to increase your st- your mm. knowledge yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean I, I completely agree. I think you need to be constantly look um looking to improve yourself in yeah. in whatever you're doing. Yeah. You just don't limit yourself to one place. Try to explore. There's so much to do in nursing. Mm. So go ahead, throw yourself out there, look for new opportunities, explore and yeah. you know, become Because become even if you're working in the surgical world, a mythology world in my case, I see you you receive a patient a mythology patient in ICU and you don't know how to manage that patient yeah. because you don't have the opportunity to study yeah in my case in a mythology in patient is like a ICU but if you don't know how to manage that patient the patient will die mm. so that is a big challenge you have, you to, have yeah. to help yeah, yeah. educate yourself and yeah. Then, yeah avail yourself for training so yeah. yeah so if we are talking about nursing and yeah. nurses <laughs> yeah. we will we'll talk for 24 hours and there will still be more to talk about yeah. so if you appreciate the good work of nurses just give a shout out in the comment section yeah. like and share this video to any nurse you know and then keep on advocating for good treatment for nurses and then to the nurses out there try and improve yourself try and dedicate yourself to um, learning and then try to give out your best to help uh, your patients get better and until we meet in our next episode i think it's just peace Thank you.